Hi WBSC, I'm back with edition number two of the Blended Scotch Tasting Series. This is Peated Blends. Uh, Andrew will be posting a video uh, with the same five scotches tonight also, so you'll be able to compare once again uh, my notes with his and based on what you know of what things we like versus you, maybe it'll help you decide what ones you might want to try. You'll notice I don't have any bottles with me on the uh, table today, and that is because uh, there's quite a color um, distinction with some of these, and I did not want to run, run the risk of my views being tainted by being able to see what was in sitting in the bottles uh, and influencing any of my decisions. Uh, when we started this, Andrew and I agreed that we would like to keep the chosen scotches under $80. We weren't able to do that on, in one case, and it is one of the ones we're drinking here. We couldn't get one of the ones we wanted, which was Great King Street Glasgow Blend. Um, it's not that available at this time, and neither of us was able to get a bottle of it. And so what we did was we added in one that he had that is a higher priced bottle um, and we thought in a totally different way that might actually be good because we can see how these others that are quite a bit less money uh, will compare to that one. Now let me tell you really quick which scotches we're going to be tasting. Uh, number one is Johnny Walker Black which is a 40% blend. Um, it's pretty inexpensive. I think a fifth probably runs in the 30s. I can't remember the exact price. Um, number two is Big Pete. Uh, and that is put out by the Douglas Lane Company. Uh, it comes in at 55.7%. And I think it runs somewhere around 60 to $65. Um, number three is Pete Monster from Compass Box. It comes in at 46%. And it is, uh, in, if, in case I didn't say that, it's made by Compass Box. And uh, I, I think it runs somewhere 55 to $62. Um, number four is Black Grouse, or as the newer versions are called, Smoky Grouse. It comes in at 40% and it runs about $25 a bottle. And number five is Compass Box Flaming Heart and that is the one that we varied our price index on. It's 48.9% and it, this is the anniversary edition so I think the regular Flaming Heart comes in at about 130, 140 and this one I think is more like 160. Um, I don't honestly know whether the regular and the anniversary edition are any different at all. Um, so, that's what we're going to do. Um, I don't know what any of these are, and um, hopefully the Pete won't overwhelm me by the time I get to the fifth one. <clears throat> this one is surprisingly sweet. The smoke is earthy and um, it's muted. It's a very pleasant balance. This is a superly balanced nose. The peat is light. There's a lot of uh, dark fruits like plums, maybe some raisin. There's a slight bit of saltiness and I get a pretty good whiff of malt. That's very nice. I like this one. It's a nice uh, dark amber color. We'll see what it tastes like. Once again, this is very balanced. There's a lot of sweetness in the palate. The smoke is not the primary. 
Uh, with some peated scotches, you're going to get massive amounts of smoke and not much else. This isn't like that. Um, I'm still getting the cereal grains, some, some uh, brown sugar, dark fruits like plums and cherries. The, the malt is still there. All in all, this is extremely balanced. I like this. This is an excellent, excellent whiskey. The burn is very minor. Um, it's not overwhelming at all. I, I think this might bring out even more flavors if it added a little water to it. We're not going to take the time to do that on all these today because it takes too long. So let's get some water and see what we do with the second one. I'm going to get a whip of coffee too. My nose is uh, getting uh, quite a workout on this already because the amount of smoke that's coming just radiating off of all these is quite a bit. So isolating is a little bit of, a, of an issue. Okay, this one This one, the smoke is um, is not as earthy, it's meaty. This one reminds me of opening up a smoker. Uh, it doesn't taste like, bar uh, or smell rather, like barbecue. Uh, this is more like uh, smoking dry meats uh, with the sugar caramelizing on the meat. Maybe some uh, ribs without any barbecue or uh, a brisket. Um, the, sugar, the brown sugar and the wood come out like you're doing a wood smoke. But basically, the, the, the meaty smoke, some salt, um, the, the brown sugar, and the, the, the oak, the charred oak, is basically all there is in the nose of this. It's very nice. It's not bitter at all and there's no real burn. Uh, it's definitely peat forward on the palate. Very, very long finish. The peat sticks with you a lot longer than it did in the other one, which is to be expected since the peat is more prominent. Lots and lots and lots of dry smoke. Um, there's some brininess underneath. I don't get nearly as much of the meat flavor as I did on the nose. There's a slight bit of sweetness, but it's subdued. There's citrus in this one. You get some uh, some lemon peel. Not so much orange. It's more lemon. This reminds me of um, a Colila or um, a Makir Bay from Kilhoman. Um, it's not exactly like either one, but it, it's reminiscent. If you like those, this is a good one. Uh, the second one here. Uh, very, very, very long finish on this. It's still lingering there. A little bit of raisin and some, maybe some almond on the, on the finish. This was much more difficult to clean out my palate on than the non-peated were. coffee in my nose. I keep messing with my hat. I don't wear hats that often and this one is relatively new. I picked this up. This is an Appleton Estates hat. I'm kind of happy with that hat. Um, I picked that up at Appleton Estates in Jamaica in March when I got to travel there for the first time. Loved it. 
Uh, but use your sunscreen. It's the hottest sun I have ever seen. This one is very fruit forward. Um, sherry. Peaches. Raisin. Malt. Cereal sweetness. And that's not to discount the smoke, but it's all balanced in there. Um, rather, hmm, I don't know what to compare it to. The smoke subtlety is similar to a Highland Park 12, but it's much more fruity. Um, I expect the flavor of this to be sweeter mixed with the smoke, very sweet kind of like a Highland Park 18. But to be honest, it's been about a year or so since I've had a Highland Park 18. I'm not certain that I'm correct. There's a lot going on here. This is very, very complicated. Definitely stone fruits. Some apple. Some almond. What you'll see people to call marzipan, which is a like an almond paste. Very good nose. Fantastic nose. Uh, all, all, all three of these have had good noses, but this one, this one is tops. Okay. Sweet smoke. It's sweet and smoky. Um, a little bit of the meatiness this time again. I get the uh, the flavor of smoked meat. A little bit of bacony, um, but I get a lot of sweet breads too. Um, I don't know which ones to describe, but kind of a shortbread. Um, the maltiness is still there. This is extremely balanced, uh, whereas this one. Uh, was primarily smoky. Uh, this one is very, very balanced as far as um, what it has to offer in the complexity. A little bit of bitter orange. Mm -hmm. Orange is the primary fruit in the palate. Um, there's maybe something else there, maybe some raisin, prune maybe. Prune isn't something I'm super um, familiar with, however, I do like plums. And it seems like a little bit of a um, sour version of that. Long palate, it's a little bit numbing on the tongue. Um, this one was silkier on the tongue than the first two. When I first put it in my mouth, I, clo I actually closed my eyes because the feel of it on my tongue was, was very silky. Now this felt really rich. I, I'm expecting this to be one of the higher proof ones. Um, it didn't have much burn. It was, it was nice. It was smooth. It wasn't harsh. But I do think it's higher proof because it just had such richness to it. Give me one second to get myself in order here for the future. I don't want to lose track of what I thought of each one. I can already tell you that this is going to be a harder decision than the budget lens. Um, overall, I think these are higher quality uh, scotches than what we had in the budgets last week. Okay, this one is much, much paler like grass, like hay. Uh, the first three uh, were varying degrees of golden or amber. This one's very, very pale. Heavy, heavy smoke compared to the others. It just wafts and wafts of rich smoke. Actually, um, multiple layers of smoke. There's a lot of lemon 
maybe even some lime. There's apple, salt, and sweet cereal grains. It's interesting in, in a totally different way from these others. I don't get really any fruitiness in this other than some, some, some green apple. This one hit me with a harder uh, proof burn, I think, than the others have. It has a little bit of a numbing all the way down my tongue. Um, I think this is a pretty high ABV, and this seems to be very, very peat forward. I get basically not much except both a dry smoke and a meaty smoke um, and some... Uh, cereal grains, a little bit of malt, and uh, citrus, the lemon, and maybe a little bit of lime. Um, the first one and the third one were very, very balanced um, with other kinds of scotch. Um, this one, to a lesser degree, had a, a lot of smoke forward, but it had a few other flavors. This one is very, very, very focused on, on, on smoke. Um, this, the type of smoke flavor in this reminds me a lot of Ardbeg's that I've had. Um, yeah, this reminds me a lot of Ardbeg's that I've had. I have mixed feelings about that one. It's good, but... That one's less complex than the others. It's singularly focused on, on, the, on the peak. This one is just slightly darker colored than the other one. Than the last one. That was almost white. This one has a little bit of golden to it. Still kind of a grassy look. This one is once again sweeter. Um, the smoke is prominent, but it's a sweet, definitely a sweet smoke. It's a little earthy. Uh, I, I think it's uh, vegetable smelling. If I, I don't really know how to say that. Um, there's still some lemon. Um, but I also get some bitter orange. It's extremely smooth. I get some malt, but I'm not getting the cereal sweetness in this one. It's rich. It's a rich smoke, a deep smoke. Smoke forward. Not as balanced in taste. This one's definitely focused at least in the nose, on smokiness. If anything, this is a darker smoke in the palate than the last one. I'm not... This is a little bit more in the style of a Laphroaig, and this one was a little more in the style of an Ardbeg as far as the style of smoke. There's a little bit of medicine in this one, a little bit of iodine -y flavor. I didn't really pick that up in the nose, but I do definitely in the palate. Hmm. There's more burn in the back of it, in the finish in your throat. This has got the, the biggest burn. So this is, I suspect, quite a high ABV. It just, the finish is so long with this one. 
If you absolutely love smoke, I mean absolutely want the peatiest thing you can get, this is a good blend for you. Now before the reveal, let me tell you, there's not a single one of these that I would not drink. Depending on my mood and what I was like wanting that day, I would drink every single one of these. There are some that I like more than others. Um, because I'm a guy that mixed in with my peat, I really enjoy um, tasting the other styles with it. And, and I'm not so much into having something that is peat only and absolutely nothing else. Um, I'm going to lean towards some of the ones that had some sweetness. Um, and I think I'm going to pick this one as my number one. Number two. These two are really close. This is number four for me. I'm not as much of an Ardbeg fan as I am some other kinds of smoke, and that's, that's where that one's at. Um, These are really close. I'm going to have to go this way. Um, very slightly. Just my three and four are so close it's very difficult for me to figure it out. Okay, let's see what they are. The winner! <laughs> this is a surprise. My winner was Black Grouse. My winner was Black Grouse, or as the newer bottlings are known, Smoky Grouse. And this is a $24 to $25 bottle of scotch, guys. If you have not tried that, give yourself a shot at it. It may not be your cup of tea, but what do you got to lose for $24? Bucks? My winner is Black Grouse. That is good stuff. All right? Number two is the number one. And see, that surprises me too. Neither of my winners were what I thought they would be. This is number one, which is the Johnny Walker Black. And I, I'm even more surprised by that. Um, I, I'm not a Johnny Black drinker. I'm unfamiliar with it. I've had the Double Black and really liked it, but I'm not a black drinker. Didn't know. Um, number two is my third place, which is Big Pete, which uh, Big Pete is put out by the Douglas Lang Company. We'll be doing some more Douglas Lang uh, scotches in the next um, series, or in the next video of the series. Um, and number four is five, Compass Box Flaming Heart, which means that number five is Pete Monster from Compass Box. And that doesn't surprise me at all because I've tried it one other time and the other time that I tried it, I really wasn't too impressed with it. If you like Ardbeg, and I mean like you really, that's the kind of smoke you want. The Peat Monster's great. But if you want more complexity and if you want other things in it and you would rather have a Laphroaig than, or a Talisker or something like that instead of Ardbeg, Peat Monster's not your thing. So, recapping. Very sweet and balanced. Smoke, but not overwhelming. Lots going on, big complexity is black grouse. The cheapest of the bunch. Uh, the Compass Box Faming Heart, I believe was here. I put it fourth. I'm not a huge Compass Box guy. So some, for some reason, I, I really like the Great King Street, but their other blends are not my cup of tea. Um, they have a tendency to be a little more bourbon directed than traditional scotch directed, and maybe that's why it doesn't work quite as well. Like I said, I would drink every single one of these. There's not a one of them I dislike. And these two were very close, um, and this one was what, the Big Pete? Yes, this one was the Big Pete and slightly edged out. The Big Pete um, was the one put out by Lane. Uh, and um, and uh, so uh, this was the Johnny Walker. Big surprise for me, probably a big surprise for some of you, and I can almost guarantee you this time that Andrew and I are not going to agree on how this comes out, um, which I think is the funnest thing. Now I have to wait to find out what he did. Um, thank you for watching. Tune in next week. We're going to have premium 
blends. These are going to be blends in the $40 to $80 range. And several of them are things that you've probably never brought yourself to buy because you're not going to gamble on them for $60 or $70. So we're going to tell you what you might want. In the meanwhile, try you some of that black grouse. See you later.